Hey everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today I want to talk about the economics of one of these 12 volt compressor fridges. And I want to look at two different ideas. First is the idea, should you get one of these or should you get ice? Uh, and we'll talk about the economic practicalities of each. But then the second question, and I think that uh, a question that I've completely just changed my mind on is, do you spend the extra money and buy a higher quality name brand? So we'll talk about those two questions. First, the question of ice. Should you buy one of these? If occasionally you want something to stay cold, uh, then you can buy a nice chest, use it for storage, and then occasionally empty it out and buy some ice. That works great. I'm out here to live my highest quality possible life. I'm not out here to prove how little I can, I can live on or, or show up how much hardship I can take. I want a high quality life. And everything that means high quality life to me, I want to have. So for example, I want cold foods. I want to be able to have foods that I enjoy even if they're cold. I don't want to be restricted by just what I can buy and eat that doesn't require refrigeration. That's, that's not for me a high quality life. Now, I understand for a lot of you it is. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying I'm, you and I are different in that way. I want a cold pop. I want to be able to keep yogurts because I really like yogurts. Uh, I want to be able to have cold meat. I want to, what I want more than anything else is I want to be able to cook up three, four, five meals and all at once, do all the cleanup once, do all the cooking once. I don't enjoy cooking. I certainly don't enjoy cleaning afterwards. And then I want to eat those meals for four, maybe five days. And that means refrigeration. So no question in my mind, I'm, I've always had and will always have refrigeration. Again, if you, if it, you don't need it, thumbs up. Uh, you simplified your life, saved yourself a lot of money. Uh, but if you do, then should you get an ice chest or should you spend the money for one of these? Now, now this is a 12 volt compressor fridge. Let me just define what this is. Um, they can easily run off solar. If you have 200 watts of solar, you can easily run one of these. I've been doing it for years and years. It's, I know for a fact that if you have uh, a 200 watts of solar and you're not using, you could use so much other stuff that it wouldn't work, but the average person can get by with 200 watts. In the winter, you'll get less out of the 200 watts, but this will come on less. So it, it balances out. 200 watts of solar will get you by on one of these real well. Solar's no problem. They, they have such a low draw. Most of them draw around 50 watts, about four amps, but uh, they're only coming on uh, two, four, six, six hours a day at, at four amps. That's 24 amps. Well, even if you just have a single battery, uh, you're probably gonna get by with that because a lot of that will be during the day when it's hot um, and you're replenishing it. Uh, if you have enough solar, you're replenishing it as it comes out. So should you get an ice chest or one of these? Now, let's talk about the disadvantages of an ice chest. Uh, well, first off, there's buying ice. And if you run out of ice, it's an emergency trip to town to get ice. And it's storing ice in here and food. And I have thrown away, I, over the years that I've used an ice chest, which is a lot, before I had solar, I only used ice. Um, I've thrown away a lot of food. I've probably thrown away hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars worth of food because it got contaminated and got wet and I threw it away. Or, or, or I couldn't get into town quick enough and it all warmed up and I was, un, I was afraid to eat it and I threw it away because it got, I thought it got too warm. So uh, there's a, a lot of uh, waste in food. Uh, you're buying ice. I figure you're going to spend a minimum of $5 a week on ice. That's probably two bags of ice. Now, believe me, I've been in a lot of remote places where it was <laughs> $2 a bag would have been cheap, really cheap. Uh, and that's assuming two bags a week is enough. And in the summer when it's 80, 90 degrees outside, it is not enough. You'll use more than two bags, I'll guarantee it. Even if you're using blocks, blocks last a lot longer. Blocks are harder to find. They usually cost more. Um, a minimum of $5 a week, and I think a much more realistic average year-round is $10 a week. But we'll go with the low number. $5 a week times 52 weeks a year is $260. Well, it just so has happened that this fridge costs $269. So if you can come up with $269, you will have paid for this thing in one year in ice. I will guarantee you that. Uh, and you already have the solar. So... 
economically, it only makes sense. Now, I think I where I go, I go out and camp in the middle of nowhere, it's not $2 a bag. First, it's a 10, 20 mile trip to the nearest ice. Uh, and that's gas I'm burning to get the ice every two, three days, every two, three days, or once or twice a week uh, at, at, at minimum. And then when I get there, I've paid $5 for a bag of ice in a little store in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I think this thing at $269, that's what I paid for this, um, free shipping. Uh, I think this thing could pay for itself in six months. It will certainly pay for itself in the first year. Then after that, it's free. You, you just because you're not buying ice anymore. So to my mind, the economics work. Uh, if you don't have the $269, that doesn't change the fact that you would be far better off with one of these than you would be in uh, buying ice. So that raises the question of, should you buy a cheap one, and this is $269, and this is pretty cheap, you can get them for less. You can get them out as low as 200 bucks. Should you spend 200 to $250 on one of these? Or should you spend 500 to 600 for a medium quality brand? Or should you spend 1000 for a high quality brand? So there's three different tiers. Uh, in my thinking, there's three different tiers of fridges. There's this bottom Chinese no-name fridges. So this is a Joy Tutus, okay? That's Chinese no-name, that's, that's the bottom line. So they're no Chinese no-name, they're smaller, you don't know who made any part of it, you don't know who made the compressor, you're just, uh, you're just guessing and you're buying a fridge, hoping that it lasts. Now, a step up above from that are, are the high-name, high-quality brand name. To me, the big one is Dometic. Uh, and I have owned, uh, personally, I've owned uh, one Dometic fridge and it lasted me five years and then it failed and I threw it away. Uh, but I've had numerous friends who, who've owned Dometics and they have failed after one, two, three, four years, five years. Uh, so, and they're going to be the small ones. I bought a 25 quart and it's going to be $400, $450, double this. Basically, it's just going to be about double this uh, for about the same size. And then you can buy uh, the Dometic. And I bought a truck fridge. There's, uh, there is Indel B. There are a number of, of, of middle tier brand names. Uh, names that you know, they, they're using a good compressor. And they're Chinese ones too in that middle tier. They're going to be between uh, $400 and $600 for a between 40 and, uh, and 60 quart. And then you've got the top tiers, and that would be ARB and Ingle. And they're 900 bucks and up. The cheapest Ingle on Amazon right this minute is 915. The cheapest ARB that I saw was 980. So these are top tier brand names, 900 bucks and up. An ARB 60 quart is $1,034. So they're, they're big and expensive. And my thinking has been to buy the middle tier because you'll get enough, enough lifetime that it's worth buying those, not buying the cheap ones. And it's just so expensive, 900 to 1,000 bucks to buy one of the high quality ones. I've known numerous people who've owned Ingles and I have never heard of a single person who bought an Ingle that had it fail. They are the king of 12 volt fridge reliability. But it's almost five times as much as this. Will it last five times longer than this will? And my answer is it probably will not. I can't imagine that it will last five times longer. So, and, and who, who among us has the 900 to 1,000 bucks to put out up front to buy it? My, here's my bottom line. When I think about the economics of the three tiers, I have decided to buy cheap ones because I believe the cheap ones will last me as long as the middle tier. I really do. Uh, I hate to throw buy something knowing it's going to die and I'm going to throw it away. But uh, I bought my Dometic because I thought it was a high quality product and it would last me forever. It lasted five years and then I threw it away. It's in the dump. And then I bought a Winter and I, I sold the Winter after three years so it lasted me three years so that's good. 
And then I sold, uh, it would only fit in the trailer. It couldn't fit in my van. It was too big. It was a 60 quart and it wasn't going to fit in the van with me. So I had a cargo trailer that I lived in. And so when I sold the cargo trailer, that the winter went with it and I replaced it with a truck fridge. So I've been in a truck fridge now uh, for the last three years, I, three years or four years, I forget which, and it just failed and it's in the landfill now. Uh, the problem is you can't practically get these things fixed. So I bought the truck fridge. Uh, I paid, how much was that? I paid $5.50 for the truck fridge and it was $50 for shipping. So I paid $600 for the truck fridge. It was an Indel B, which is a good brand name. It's Italian. It had a Dan Foss compressor. My thinking is the Dan Foss compressor will last longer. It will be better. Um, well, it wasn't for me. My experience has been universally that the medium tier, you're lucky if you get five years and you might probably get less. That's been both my personal experience and the people that I talk to. So I'm just done with, with the middle tier, the Dometics, the truck fridge. Uh, if it's gonna fail after a year to three years, probably, then uh, I'm gonna buy a cheap one, which I think will get me one to three years, and then, uh, and then I'll throw it away. Now, one, you might be saying to yourself, well, Bob, those are all a lot big freezer. Those are much bigger fridges. Those are all 40 to 60 quart. This is only 26 quarts. Well, here's the funny thing about it. When I went and emptied my uh, truck fridge into the 20 quart, it took everything out of it, and it wasn't full. I was low. Fortunately, I was low when it died on me. They're this much taller, and the bottom is so hard to work with that I fill the bottom up with stuff to raise it, because I don't want to go all the way from, from the bottom here up to about here and have to dig down to get all my stuff. So I filled the bottom in with other things, and I, I'm, I won't try to explain to you what it is, but I lost about the bottom four inches, and I usually didn't use the top three or four inches. And so the bottom line was, I was probably using about the same 26 quarts, because this 26 quarts and this one will be 100% usable. So if you want cold foods, cold beverages, then this is far better use of your money. If you can afford the 200 to $300, you'll be far better off with this than an ice chest. You'll pay for this its first year. I can almost guarantee it at 200 to $300. And from there on in, you save money on ice. It's going to be much cheaper in the long run than ice. I promise you that. I think you could pay for itself within six months to a year at the absolute most if you get one for less than $300. Which one should you buy? Which tier? The low tier and just expect to be throwing them away? The middle tier to expect them to last longer and then be amazed when they don't? Or the top tier uh, where you pay a lot of money and with an eagle you get something that lasts a very, very, very long time? Well, you have to answer that question for yourself. Uh, my answer is I'm going to buy one of these. I think it's going to be worth it even if it's cheap Chinese junk because I think it may not be junk. I think it's pretty likely that it will last long enough for you to be pleased you have bought it. Now, I'm an environmentalist, and I don't like this idea of buying cheap stuff just knowing that I'm going to throw it in the way. But if, I spent, if I've consistently spent $600 and still ended up throwing away, that failed because stuff is still in that landfill. I've still put two fridges in the landfill, and I don't know about the third one, but I'm almost certain it's in the landfill by now. Thanks so much for uh, watching and uh, listening, and hopefully you've learned something. If you did, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you on the next video.